Thank you for giving us this brief opportunity on behalf of Parliament to convey our deepest condolences to the family of Comrade Collins Chabani, the ANC and the Alliance in general, his friends included. Similarly, to the families of protectors Sikele and Linswani, we hope their loved ones will be consoled by the tremendous amount of messages of comfort intended to soften and lighten the unbelievable hurt they must be feeling as we speak. All political parties in Parliament express shock and disbelief at his certainly untimely death and conveyed their condolences during a motion debated in his memory this past Tuesday in the House in Cape Town. A great giant who showed the globe like a colossal has fallen. A mind whose thoughts have opened the doors to our liberty has ceased to function. A heart whose dreams give hope to the despised has forever lost its feet. The gentle voice whose measured words of reason shook the thrones of tyrants has been silenced. Those are borrowed words from the late great uh, Honorable former President Nelson Mandela, you know of late great Oliver Tambo. I found that they truly encompass the, the sentiment of having have lost the great. And I say that without being sensational, without exaggerating, but with complete honesty and, and humility. To some of you here, my old man was a colleague, to some he was a friend, to some he was a, I suppose I could say, trash-talking golf player, to some he was, or to not some, but he was a husband, he was also a son, and he was also a father. To my sister and I, he was everything. And by everything I mean, he was the colleague that would aspire to be like, based on how much his colleagues commended his work ethic. He was the friend who dream of having, based on how much his friends commended him on his loyalty. He was the husband any wife would want, based on how much my mother dearly loved him. He was a son any father would be proud of. And he was a father. He was a father that both my sister and I will never forget and I'm eternally grateful to have had him. Compatriots, we are gathered here to pay tribute and to bid a word of farewell to our departed compatriot, Minister Collins Chaban. Today we remember Collins with fondness and great appreciation. Collins was a father, he was a husband, he was a son, he was a relative in the Chabani family. We remember a freedom fighter, a musician, a leader, and a servant of the people. Today, we remember a person who embodied in many ways than one the values on which we seek to build our nation. With the tragic passing of Comrade Collins Chabani, we have seen an emotional outpouring of grief from every corner of our country and indeed from beyond the borders of South Africa. We have seen our elderly and young men and women paying tribute to a gentle hero who was never removed from the daily struggles 
of the impoverished masses of our people. Though gone a bit too soon, his spirit and memory will continue to reside amongst our people in the villages, in the townships, and indeed across the land. His spirit and his work will compel us, as it must, not to rest until we have improved the lives of our people. Our loss is a colossal loss. Throughout his life, Collins Chabani remained humble, unassuming and committed to the struggle of our people for a democratic, non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous South Africa. We know him to have been a quiet strategist in an occupation often given to populism and defining or deafening rhetoric. Those of you who had the privilege to watch Collins perform his music on stage will know what I mean when I say that this gentle, thoughtful man played the struggle, he played politics, and he also played his work in government in the way that he played his music. With great talent, commitment, and certainty, but also with unassailable optimism, with emotion, and with a beguiling mixture of shyness and humor. It is difficult to remain a man of the people when you are wearing the robes of power. But Collins Chabani showed us how to do it. He was a down-to-earth person. He always treated everyone with the same dignity and respect. Whether they were a manual laborer or a gardener at the union buildings or a fellow minister. Although he progressed to the highest levels of the ruling party and of government, he always retained his humility. As a result, he was a good listener and was always open to hearing other people's points of view. 